Welcome back. <laughs> Rating agencies, including Moody's, of course, taking a bit of a beating lately. Clear message from top investors. They do their own due diligence. Thank you very much. They don't rely on the rating agencies. And some experts say so should you. Our expert on alternative investments is with us, David Kaufman, president of West Court Capital. Great to have you here. Thanks. So what are we talking about here when we talk about doing our own due diligence? Well, one of the uh, things that, that happens when someone is considering an alternative investment is that you often come face to face with a private security where there is a professional manager and they have a offering memorandum and they say, here's the deal uh, and uh, you can invest and you can make all of this money and there's often no one for that person, the prospective investor, to, to rely on. And even in the event that they have an independent uh, advisor helping them with that choice, it's still important it behooves them, because of the long-term nature of some of these investments, to really understand what they're getting into and do some of their own heavy lifting. Let's talk about the rating agency's business model. And you know, I, I don't want to downgrade um, the use of an agency, particularly on bonds, which are something most investors have some exposure to. But I'm just asking categorically, if somebody is actually analyzing debt, there's two places you can go. You can go to a rating agency where you're paid thirty dollars to $80,000 a year, or you can go trade bonds or be a bond analyst where you make half a million dollars a year. I'm going to make the assumption that everybody ends up at the agency is, let's call it, um, second tier. And as a result, the product itself is going to be second tier. And I'm not trying to insult people who work at agencies, but I don't use agencies because the data is no good. It right. doesn't really tell me if the company can support the debt at all. It's very weak. Is my premise about the quality of analysis correct, do you think? Well, it, it's, here's how I would answer that. That, that uh, if you have, for example, a dealer doing independent research or you have someone doing, doing their own, uh, typically what you would do is you would split up the sales function uh, and, and the analysis function and you would split up the analysis into quantitative and qualitative. And I would certainly say that uh, the CFAs that are out there doing quantitative analysis are, are earning every dollar that they're earning because they often are able to uncover uh, sort of the, the, the hidden intricacies of any, of any private security. From a qualitative aspect, it's important, of course, for uh, an analyst to be able to understand that, but that's where I'm trying to push the investor to try from a qualitative perspective, because they may not have the training, yeah. to do some of that on their own. Uh, and I, I, this is the second time Kevin said this in the show, so now I'm going to jump in and say, people do things that are motivated by reasons other than money. <laughs> and so some people might actually choose to work somewhere for the hours, for the, the quality of the work. I do this job, I could probably Amanda, make a lot more money somewhere else. I love very, what I do. That's very interesting. Now please come back to the real world. I'm just telling you, this is <laughs> twice you said it, we're not all motivated by money. I sure, I believe you, you though thousands wouldn't. Uh, the due diligence we're talking about here though, how do we do it? Like, What are the tools that investors, we're talking here, because we're talking alternative investments, they're right. often complex, they're often opaque. So if I'm an investor, what are the tools that I need to do due diligence? Yeah, the, the arrows in the quiver, really, I think that a lot of people need to, be, need to have are the questions that should be asked. And sometimes uh, investors can be intimidated by a fund manager or by a management company because they're the big management company and they're just one little investor. And so the basic questions are, what is the business model? Who is the manager? How do I get in? And how do I get out? And once you uh, feel that you have the right kind of questions that you're armed with, the, the, even people that do not have particular quantitative analytical expertise are still able to use their, their sense of understanding of, 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 of telling between fact and fiction and trying to, to discover uh, the, the people who are legitimate from those who might be less legitimate. I want to ask you about the changing tastes of investors because I speak to a lot of individual investors, high net worth individuals. What they seem to covet more than anything else after this last three year, call it volatile session of the market, is liquidity. They want the ability to go and pursue interesting ideas, invest in them. If they wake up in the morning and they want to get out, they want to be out in the next five minutes. Is that changing the landscape for what managers are offering high net worth individuals or any investor for that matter? There's no doubt that liquidity and risk are somewhat synonymous uh, in, in any investment, but I would disagree to some degree with your premise that what I see a lot of the clients that we deal with on a regular basis, that after the turbulent markets that we've uh, all had to endure in recent years, that liquidity, as important as liquidity is, the question is at what price? And if the price of liquidity is volatility, and for people for whom the protection of their capital is the number one goal, they may be willing to give up a little bit on the liquidity side in order to have a greater likelihood of capital preservation.
Don't have a ton of time, but independent research, where can, where can retail investors find this stuff? On, on alternative investments, you have exempt market dealers, uh, which is, it used to be called limited market dealers, who are registered across the country, and, and each Securities Commission uh, licenses them to, uh, they, they have compliance departments and they have an analytical departments. Uh, they generally provide that kind of advice. Excellent. David, great to have you here. It's a pleasure. David Kaufman, Westcourt Capital. Still ahead, Damian Ma.